Hi. Welcome to Everyday Movie Recap. For today, we will recap a sci-fi romance film called Passengers from the year 2016. The story revolves around, two passengers who are suspended animation are unexpectedly revived 90 years early due to a malfunction in their spacecraft. Have you seen this movie yet? If not, sit back, relax, and enjoy. In the near future, humans have found an empty planet that they can colonize called Homestead 2. But it takes 120 years of travel before they can arrive at the said planet. So, to make the journey possible, they made a spaceship called Avalon that would travel on autopilot with 258 crew members and 5,000 colonists. Before they arrive, the spacecraft travels into a belt of asteroids, reducing its defenses. The primary shield is given more power, but the spacecraft is headed straight for a massive asteroid. The asteroid strikes the spacecraft unexpectedly, resulting in a number of problems that would soon be important be felt all over the ship. The spacecraft starts its self-repairs. But, during the course of the journey, it awakens one of the passengers named Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer. As soon as the pod opens, an automated voice tells him that he has been asleep for 120 years and that they are four months away from their destination. He is informed that he can take advantage of the ship's features during this time. Before they set foot on the planet, Jim is given instructions on his ID band, his cabin, and the main activities he is expected to participate in. He gets ready, exits his cabin, and enters an automated classroom intended for a full learning group, excited but anxious to meet the other passengers on the ship. Jim is a little uneasy as the hologram describes Earth's current state as being overpopulated. Jim is told to save his questions till the conclusion of the session, but he can't stop wondering why he's the only one in the room. After realizing the hologram is unable to respond to him, he leaves to look for other individuals. He enters the ship's main room. An automated information desk provides assistance, but no one is present either. Jim requests to speak with a real person, and when he discovers that no one else is there, he begs to speak with the captain. He sees that none of the major crew members are awake. Jim ultimately makes his way to the observatory, where he discovers that Homestead 2 is still 90 years away and that he woke up too soon. He dashes back to the hall and sends a message to Earth, unsure of how to go back into hibernation. He finds out via the communications system that it would take around 55 years to receive a response from the call to Earth. Jim is crushed. After exploring, he comes to the ship's bar and spots someone else there. He's an odd-looking bartender. Jim discovers he's an android when he tries to bring him a drink. His name is Arthur. Jim wants to ask him additional questions, but he is unable to even clarify how Jim woke up ahead of time. The following day, Jim wakes up in his cabin and heads to the food court, where he soon discovers that most of the menu items are exclusive to gold-class travelers. He fixes his hibernating chamber and fetches his simple coffee. He gathers all the tools, figures out how to make it work, and lies down within the pod. Nevertheless, there was no response. He then chooses to enter the crew's sleep chambers using the equipment he discovered. That also fails to function. There are small defects all across the ship. Jim frequently goes back to the pub to chat with Arthur but also to drink. After receiving some advice from the robot, he decides to try having some fun on the ship by breaking into one of the gold rooms. Jim checks out every eatery, every game, and every entertainment system. But the more he stays there by himself, the more lonely he gets. He explores the sleep pods one day after becoming drunk, and he stumbles into an airlock housing spacesuits used for spacewalks. Jim changes into a suit, goes to the airlock, and releases the airlock door by pressing a lever and then a button. When he steps outside the ship, the scenery captivates him. He is the sole living individual witnessing that particular point in time. Feeling disappointed, Jim lets go of the magnets on his boots and floats in space. Returning inside, he takes off the suit but leaves it on and heads back to the airlock. He pushes the lever, prepared to end it all, but at the last second, he decides against it and dashes back inside. Jim gets to his feet and finds himself attracted to Aurora, a woman in one of the chambers. After listening to her passenger interview and looking over her data in the directory, he falls in love with her. After giving her more thought, Jim begins to feel compelled to rouse her up as well. Though he doesn't like the idea, he discusses it with the android. Initially, Jim is against it, but as time passes, he finds it difficult to let go of the thought, and eventually, he thinks about it again. He approaches her pod and succeeds in turning it on. He hides and retreats to his room while she wakes up and experiences the same things he did. A short while later he heads to the main concourse. And there she is, exactly as perplexed as he was a year prior. 
Jim leads her to the observatory after informing her that they are the only ones awake. He informs her that he has no access to the ship's primary commands or the crew. Aurora panics and tries to return to her pod. When they arrive, Jim informs her that they are trapped and that the spacecraft does not have any unique equipment that would enable them to go back to sleep. After they return to the concourse, he advises her to take it easy because she has just emerged from hibernation. She feels bad for him since he has to be alone on the ship for almost a year. Jim returns to the pub, feeling bad about his actions. The following morning, Aurora returns to the concourse and she questions the automated information desk on the hibernation pods. When Jim arrives, she takes him to have breakfast. The information desk malfunctions in some way as they are leaving. When Aurora discovers that Jim has been eating the same breakfast for over a year in the cantina, she buys him one of the gold class menus. They discuss whether or not to mend the pods, but unlike Jim, Aurora isn't prepared to give up. She looks through study papers, and the infirmary, and finally arrives at the crew's hibernation rooms where she attempts to force the doors open. Jim finds further issues with the ship as a whole. Later on, Aurora complains about her existence on the Avalon. She writes, walks the ship, and swims in the pool as her awareness of her circumstances grows. She believes Jim's story may be fascinating, so she goes to the cantina to interview him. Why did he come to the colony, she wonders. Jim responds by quoting business slogans at first, but he then goes on to say that he wishes to establish a life and become successful in the new world. When they eventually get to the observatory, Aurora finally explains why she is there. She is the only traveler aboard the ship with a round-trip ticket. Her plan was to visit Homestead 2, stay there for a year and then return to Earth in order to become the first journalist to accomplish so and write the greatest story in history. As Aurora gradually loses hope in solving their present situation, Jim finds a means to make her feel better. He brings her to the movies, the basketball court, and other fun things on the ship. Finally, he brings her to the bar so they may meet Arthur. She unwinds for a while before realizing what has happened to them. Alone with the robot, Jim is filled with regret for what he has done to her. He is seen working with something, and when Aurora enters the observatory, she finds a small version of the Chrysler building that he had built for her. After that, they go on a date. While eating dinner, they chat about their life stories. She informs him that when she was a teenager, her father passed away. Jim and Aurora gear up in their spacesuits in the airlock after their date. Together, they venture out on a spacewalk. Jim may now finally share that amazing experience with someone. When Jim turns off the magnets in their boots, they both levitate in midair. Returning inside, they share a kiss right away before retiring to his cabin to sleep together. They begin living as a couple shortly after that. Writing about her time on the ship, Aurora settles into his stateroom. They do everything together as a couple. As Jim continues to investigate the ship, he discovers the hydroponics bay. He presents flowers to Aurora. After visiting the observatory, they move to view the red giant that the ship passes by. That day is Aurora's birthday. Thus, they celebrate it at the bar later that evening after dining in one of the ship's restaurants. While she is at the bar talking with Arthur, Jim goes to the restroom and gets ready to give Aurora the ring he crafted. Although he was still supposed to keep it a secret, the android informs Aurora that Jim purposefully awakened her. She is flabbergasted when she confronts him. In anger, she walks away. All of her belongings are gone when Jim returns to his room. The next day, he bumps into her at the cantina, but as soon as he says anything, she takes off. She visits Jim's cabin one day and starts hitting and kicking him for taking her life away from her. She did not choose to spend 89 years on that ship without arriving at their destination. Jim tries to apologize and give her an explanation for his behavior by talking to her over the phone because she continues to avoid him. Aurora doesn't seem to care when he tells her he's fallen in love. While Jim stays at his cabin one night, there is yet another issue. The primary command of the spacecraft cuts out. Later on, when he enters the elevator, it breaks down. As Aurora enters the main concourse, she notices that Jim has placed a tree there. After that, she visits the food court, where there is another issue with the food dispensary. Suddenly, the voice of the captain can be heard over the comms, inquiring as to who planted the tree. Gus Mancuso is seen standing in front of Jim's tree as they both dash onto the concourse. They make their introductions and inform the chief of the circumstances. He doesn't see the ship could be in that situation. When they go to the bridge, Mancuso finds that there is a problem with the spacecraft, but that data on the systems needs to be manually verified. They warn Mancuso that there have been more irregular problems throughout the ship. As he demonstrates how to gather the data, he says that problems shouldn't happen. 
Jim accompanies Mancuso as he visits the pods to check on them. He knows what transpired with Aurora's pod. The deck chief thinks Jim did a bad thing. When Mancuso gets the hibernating sickness, he retires to bed, but on his way out, he starts to cough up blood. When Aurora can't sleep that night so she takes a swim. She begins to drown as the water in the pool travels with her as the ship suddenly loses gravity. She narrowly survives when the gravity drive resets. While searching for Mancuso, they cross paths with one another. Returning to the bridge, the three of them are gradually learning what has been happening with the ship. Mancuso discovers that a significant system was removed due to an incident that occurred two years earlier. As every part of the ship struggles to keep everyone safe, they must identify and address the reason for the malfunction. The ship will be in danger if they don't fix it. As they search for the issue, Mancuso passes out, and Jim and Aurora take him to the hospital. There is nothing that they can do to stop him from dying or give him more time to live. A little while later, the three of them cross paths at the observatory where Mancuso hands Jim his ID bracelet, orders them to fix the ship, and then passes away. The ship begins to tremble as the lights abruptly turn red. When Jim tells Aurora he needs her assistance, they flee in the direction of the control room, but the gravity drive has another breakdown. Arthur is also not spared as he also malfunctions. When they do get to engineering, they seek for the issue. Aurora gets pulled in when they open the hatch. They find out the main cause of all the problems, including the early awakening of Jim and the captain. An asteroid breach has hit the ship. Jim gets sucked in too, but fortunately, he manages to hold into something. Jim becomes aware that the hull has several breaches. After tracking the meteor's path, the two discover that it struck the reactor control panel. Jim believes he can locate spare components for it. Even when they locate and replace the component, the reactor's venting procedure still fails. They try it by hand, but it keeps failing. Jim discovers that in order to access the vent door from outside the spacecraft, in order to cool the reactor. As he prepares to go, he offers Aurora Mancuso's bracelet because he may not return. The two of them proceed to the airlock. She assists him with the suit and, as he enters the airlock, tells him to return, saying that she cannot survive aboard the ship without him. Aurora returns to the reactor, where temperatures have reached dangerous levels. As Jim approaches the vent from the outside and notices the door, a reactor bolt shoots into her arm. As he attempts to open the reactor room's vent door by circumventing it, the temperature inside rises. He informs Aurora that he will have to physically keep the door open in order for the reactor to vent. He reminds her that they must save the others, and she vents the reactor since she doesn't want him to die. The procedure works, but Jim gets pushed away and loses his tether by the reactor's fumes. His suit's pressure is also decreasing. After telling Aurora what occurred, she rushes to change into a new suit so that she may bring him in. He offers her another apology. Though her tether is too short, she dons a costume and takes off to retrieve him. She gets dragged away, but then she manages to draw him in by grabbing hold of his rope. When Aurora follows Jim inside the hospital, she discovers that he is not breathing. She resuscitates him by using his wristband to bypass the medic room security. This revives him and Aurora forgives him. Afterwards, Mancuso is given a respectable space burial, while Arthur is fixed. Jim informs her he's managed to turn the medical pod into a sleep pod as he leads her to the infirmary. He instructs her to enter the pod and spend the remainder of the voyage inside. However, she rejects it and chooses to remain awake aboard the ship with him. After living their whole lives on the ship, Jim eventually pops the question to her. The movie ends as Avalon lands at Homestead 2, 88 years later. The crew awakens and they discover the ship in an extremely strange state. In a note, Aurora recounts the life she and Jim led on the ship while the others were asleep. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy this movie. For more content like this, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.